Hi there, thanks for tuning in to the Ableton Certified Trainers YouTube channel. My name is Simon Stokes. I'm an Ableton Certified Trainer based up here in Glasgow in Scotland at my music school, which is called Subsign Academy of Electronic Music. And uh, we're in the classroom right now. This is where we teach people music production from beginners right through to expert, just in kind of casual evening and weekend classes. So we get people from the local area in Scotland coming for their weekly classes, and then people from further afield over from abroad coming in to learn for a weekend from an industry professional like myself. Um, I'm a music producer. I go by the name Petricor on Soma Records. So I'm making kind of ambient and techno music. We, we kind of focus on underground electronic music here and we focus exclusively on Ableton Live as our software of choice. So um, that's why I'm here today to have a little chat to you about Live 11. So exciting when a new version of Ableton Live comes along every four or five years and this is no exception there's loads of great new stuff built into live 11 but um i've just got time to take you around one of my favorite features that's been brought into the workflow and that is the modulators in the audio effects section now if you had max for live before in live 10 you will have known about maybe the lfo or shaper devices but because they've been brought right into the audio effects section which has had a revamp here in live 11 it's just much easier to access them and use them in your projects so we've got three devices really envelope follower lfo and shaper and these three are really capable of adding movement and modulation to your sounds synthesizer sounds or electronic music sounds without modulation flat and lifeless, but as soon as you start to have parameters moving by themselves, particularly if they're out of sync with your project, that's what keeps your ear interested with loopy music over a long time. So I've got a track here which I've just been playing around with, and I thought maybe we could just look at adding some of these sounds into it, or some of these modulation devices into it. So um, I've got hats here for a start, using a little bit of the hybrid reverb and the phaser flanger new devices here to play around with. These are quite cool as well. So an LFO is a low frequency oscillator. It's just something which goes up and down and up and down and doesn't do anything until you tell it to control something else. So say for example, I map this to my filter. Well, now the filter is going to move by itself up and down. I could tell it to go a bit slower. I could tell it to not go the full range of the filter just a little bit. So I'm now telling it to just bounce around the top of this filter frequency here and kind of add a bit of modulation. And I mean, just little movements like that can actually make a big difference to your project, just having parts coming in and out, particularly when they're a little bit out of sync. Like I've just got this kind of running in a fairly random time here. Um, and you can take this LFO and map it to other things. Like I could map it to my, you know, reverb parameters. I could map it to... Um, the pre-delay on the reverb could be quite weird. Maybe bring the range down so it doesn't do it quite as much. But yeah, you can do all sorts of interesting things just by playing around with these modulators. If you take my pads and I bring a shaper device onto them. Now, shaper is a similar idea. It goes up and down. You tell it what to control. But this time you can draw the shape that you want it to go in. So say, for example, we have it on this shape and I map it to, well, let's try the volume fader. I can make it go faster. That's in a kind of 3 16th timing. That's quite cool. Or I could try it just chopping it into 16th. Maybe bring the depth down a bit so it doesn't take do the full range of this fader, just a little bit of it. And I'm starting to add movement to the sound you know and we can map that up to something else let's try the sound the size here that's almost making a little hat type sound that's quite cool i could map it up to the blend and i was keen on that maybe the damping and you see without it a boring flat sound with it Lots of movement and kind of interesting things happening. And this is what modulator is all about. If we take envelope follower, this listens to the actual level of what's coming into it and allows you to map that up to something. So it means you can have elements reacting to each other in some way. Now, you know, I, for example, I could say, have it so that the 
the loop from the 101 here is mapped to the volume fader here. Let's boost the gain up a bit. Now that's filtering in and out as well, but you see how those two elements are now linked. And we're adding movement and dynamics to the project. And that's what can sound really good in loop-based electronic music to keep your ear a little bit interested while it's playing. So I hope that makes sense, how I would use mod modulators in a project. And if you'd like to see some more, then head over to our site, Subsign Academy of Electronic Music. That's www.subsignacademy.com for a lot more. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Simon Stokes, and I'll be back on this channel soon. Thank you.